the speak episode 26 audiences detest arrogance and self-centeredness you you kick ass when you speak present or pitch if not these expert discussions and insider tips can help you right now today welcome to the what the speak podcast i'm your host Brian Kelly. Um. If you've never seen the story behind how and why the What the Speak podcast got started, visit whatthespeak.com slash speak better to watch the 90 second video. If you like what you see, send the link to someone you know. Ken Davis, are you ready to answer the proverbial question, what the speak? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. So, yeah. <laughs> Ken, why don't you briefly tell us about yourself, um, who you are, what you do? Well, uh, my name is Ken Davis, and I travel the country delivering motivational, inspirational talks to uh, people. I've been doing this for 40 years. It's been a marvelous career. Uh, uh, we've had a marvelous time to it. We Most of the time, we're speaking to sold-out audiences, and then I also am in partnership with a man by the name of Michael Hyatt, and we run three workshops that uh, teach people how to build a platform, that teach people how to make a business out of the things that they have always loved to do rather than what they had to do, and then uh, we have another co- uh, conference called the SCORE Conference where we teach people how to prepare and deliver powerful speeches that lead people to action. Excellent. So, Ken, I've interviewed quite a number of people for the show, and a lot of them are talking about something called the SCORE method. So they said, Ken is the guy to talk to. He can give you exactly the story behind this. So I'd love to have you talk about exactly what is the SCORE method. Um, Have you maybe share a little bit on exactly what this is all about? I can do that. Um, I might not be able to do it exactly. The conference takes three days, and I'm not sure. Your podcast doesn't go that long, does it? It does not. It does not. So (laughs) let me give you a brief overview that will kind of make it clear. Uh, Almost every speaking uh, teacher, almost every course you would ever take, talks about dynamics and the importance of focus. And uh, there, almost every person who has influenced me and in my speaking talks about the importance of focus, but nobody knows how to do it. So um, let me encourage your listeners to get a piece of paper, draw a, draw a line down the middle of the piece of paper. On the left-hand side, I'm going to talk about the traditional method for preparing a speech. And then on the right-hand side, if you just write score up there, I'm going to talk about how score differs from that. And that'll give them the essence of what this is. By the way, if they use this, this little explanation that I'm going to give right now, if they just think that through before they do their next speech, it will powerfully affect um, uh, that speech. It will affect how it's received. It will affect people understanding it. And so, and so here's how it goes. In the traditional method of preparation, there was a system that went something like this, from preparation to delivery. You do your research, whatever that might be, on the topic that you're going to speak. Sometimes that's just a matter of sitting down and thinking through your own experience, because a lot of people speak from their own experience. But that's a shallow pool, so research is important. Number one, then, is to study or do your research. Number two, in the traditional process, is to then list all of the things you want to say. Not only what you've come up with your research, but uh, illustrations you want to use, supportive material, data, whatever it might be. You want to you list all the things you want to say. There may be a demonstration. There may be a video clip you want to use. So you get all excited and you write all of that down. Then number three in the traditional method of of organizing a speech is to organize that material in some kind of an order. Um, I'll say this first, I'll say this second, and I'll say this third. And then, of course, the last is to deliver that speech and uh, to a standing ovation and um, just rousing applause and, and people begging you to come back. 
That's okay, except that it leaves out what I believe is the most important element of speaking. I often say this, if you know where you're going, you can take anybody with you. If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every single time. Yeah. So here is our score method of preparing a speech. And of course, uh, it, it is, it, there, it, we lay out a system that forces you to do this. And then once you see how powerful it is, once you see how it impacts the way you speak, you never want to be without it again. It doesn't mean, and I, I want to make sure your listeners hear this, it doesn't mean that everybody speaks the same way. It just means that they speak with the same power. They bring their own giftedness to it, their own personality to it, their own passion to it. Here's our system. Number one, you study or do research. Now, some of your listeners are going, well, that sounds a lot like the number one in the other list. It is, but wait till we get to number two. Number two, you list all the things you want to say, all the resources you want to use, the clips you want to play, all of the illustrations, you list them all. You get really excited about all of the elements and components of your speech. And now your listeners are going, well, that's almost ident It is. You just need to relax a little <laughs> bit because number three is the kicker. Then you ask the question, why? To what end? What is the one thing I want to accomplish? Most speeches that are given have nine or ten things that they want to accomplish. And sometimes it's the same as the list of things that they want, to wait, they want to say. And people may go away being entertained, but they have not really felt any impulse to an action, or their lives haven't been changed in any way. So you ask the question, why? How will this help people? What will this persuade people to do? And then number four on our list is to, you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. Eliminate anything that doesn't lead to that why. Hmm. That is so hard for people to do. Well, this story was so good. And this little part always engages the audience. We had a speaker at a conference we just did called the Platform Conference, and that speaker, before he spoke, he's a dear friend, he's been to SCORE, I said to him, leave this out. And, and he just wanted to hang on to it because it's, people respond to it well. He came to me after he gave his speech and said, that is the best advice I ever had. <laughs> it gave me the freedom to give the content that the people really wanted to hear. Um, a, you know, like a, a sculptress, a person who does a, you know, a sculpture, uh, uh, a sculpture, uh, goes to the granite store, buys a hunk of granite, and then she uh, brings that granite. I don't know where a granite store is, by the way, <laughs> and I don't know how she gets it home. But she, she brings it to her studio. She sets it up, thousands of dollars worth of granite. What's the first thing she does? What does she start to do? Probably cut it would be my guess. She starts to chip away at this expensive granite, yep. huge hunks of it falling to the floor. Because the only way she can bring this beautiful image that she conceived of in her mind to the public is to get rid of everything that doesn't contribute to that image. Yep. Imagine if she had a big old piece of granite that had all kinds of swirly stuff in it, and she was making this beautiful picture of a... Uh, or this, she was creating this beautiful sculpture uh, uh, of a man with a bow and arrow or something. And she left that in just because it had that swirly stuff in there. So here's this beautiful sculpture, all of the muscles showing and everything. But he's got this 90-pound wart on his side because she liked the looks of the granite. It, it wouldn't work. So you eliminate anything that doesn't lead to the why. Then... You organize what's left in a way that does lead to the why, and then we encourage people to let that simmer, to allow life to act on that, that speech that's laying there, and then deliver with power and clarity. That's, in essence, what SCORE is about. And what the actual principles that we teach do, uh, they, they actually force you to that why because it's not easy. Some people do it intuitively. I, I, think I, I think I kind of do it intuitively. I always head for that single purpose. 
But uh, the system that we teach forces people to do that, and it doesn't matter whether it's a five-minute speech or whether you're enabling people by showing them how to do something or persuading them to do something, it will pay, take people directly to that point. I love it. it. Adds power. Great. Well, Ken, can you dive a little bit deeper and go behind to like the origins? What what kind of started this methodology? You know, what was the creation point? What was the inspiration? Um, can you share a little bit on that? Yeah. Well, I, I, it's it's actually comes from a personal story. I was speaking all over the country. Um, uh, I studied to be a, a minister, so sometimes I would speak in church. I had developed a high school assembly program, and so I would speak in high schools on the topic uh, choosing nothing but the best. Uh, I would speak to corporate uh, uh, corporate people. I was in Kiwanis clubs, and I, I I got tremendous response from all of these people. And people began to write to me, and they began to ask me, how, how do you do this? What is your secret? How is it possible to, to speak to such a variety of audiences and hold their attention? What is it that you do? And I thought it was dynamics. Uh, I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to celebrate my 67th birthday here. I feel like I'm about 25 trapped mm-hmm. in this wink- wrinkled package. But... Um, the, the, the point of that, that matter is I, I kind of get passionate about things, you know, and I thought, well, that's what it is. Most speakers get up in front and they drone on in some kind of monotone and lose the audience. And, um, you know, it's like, it's like it's just painful to listen to them. And I thought, well, it's all about passion. It's about using humor. It's about your gestures and whatever it might be. So uh, in order to answer the question that had been asked, we started the SCORE uh, conference uh, way over 20 years ago. And the very first one I did was attended by probably 30 people. Um, They came from all over the place, and we taught them how to, you know, be more dynamic and how to speak with passion and how to raise an eyebrow once in a while and change the tone of your voice and use humor. But we also taught... uh, uh, a, a little feature that I had really been impacted by, and that is how to speak with crystal clear focus, how to choose that why and how to get there. And I had developed this little system based on a couple of books that I had read. Um, I just developed a little system that you couldn't sneak out of it. There were no loopholes. This was so unlike the health program we're looking at now. But anyway, <laughs> we had it, it was it was just as solid as can be, and it was only a half hour presentation in a three day in a three day workshop. We got the most unbelievable response from the people who attended that workshop. They appreciated learning how to do humor. They appreciated all that stuff, but but basically they said the most impactful thing, the thing that absolutely changed the character of their communication and made them more powerful communicators was that half hour, 40 minute session we did on communicating with crystal clear focus. Yeah. And so what started out to be a, a session to teach, teach people how to be more theatrical and dy- dynamic ended up teaching them first how to find something <laughs> to be dynamic about, and we've never looked back. We have never, ever looked back. We had, uh, we have done, um, I'm going to guess, uh, it's got to be in the neighborhood of 500, maybe even close to 1,000 dynamic communicators workshops uh, in the United States and in other places in the world with a, a money-back guarantee, and we only had, I think in all of these years, had two people ask for their money back and both of those were trolls. <laughs> well, Ken, that's that's fantastic. I know I've heard many great things about this particular approach, and I can clearly see why. So thanks for sharing some insight into um, really what exactly SCORE is all about. Well, now I'd like to shift gears a little bit and yeah. uh, ask some fun questions for you in our rapid-fire Q&A section. Okay. And the I first might question not have is, rapid answers. you got to remember how old I am, but go ahead. Let's all right, well we'll, give you, we'll give you, instead of 60-second responses, since you're going to celebrate your 67th birthday, we'll give you 67 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> what I mean is, I might not be able to think fast enough, but go at it. I'm I got ready you. to go. 
no problem. So the first one is, um, and I'm sure you've got a good story here since you, you are a comedian. What's the funniest thing that's happened to you when you've been on stage giving a presentation? Um, you know, that, that's a, almost a hard question to ask because, or answer because there are so many, but I will just, I will single out this one. The funniest thing may have been when I was on stage on a cruise ch- a ship giving a presentation and could no longer stand up. <laughs> I staggered across the stage and it was a, it was, <laughs> it was a church, it was like a church cruise, <laughs> but I started staggering across the stage and almost fell down, grabbed a hold of a pole, which is also not good in a bunch of church people. Uh, I just, I could hardly stand up. And then people in the audience started to get sick. We were in high seas, <laughs> uh, chairs started shifting, stuff started crashing to the floor. Uh, and the audience really didn't think this was funny because of the nausea factor, but <laughs> right. I thought it was hilarious because I couldn't, I could not stand up. I staggered like a drunken sailor in front of those people. Oh my gosh. So I think that that's probably the funniest thing that ever happened. Great. We emptied that room, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, uh, all right. So what's your favorite go-to presentation resource or tool? Is there something that you use regularly uh, that's invaluable to you? Yes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to surprise you. Uh, of course, the score method, I've never stopped using the score method, ever. Yep. Whether, it's a fi- whether somebody says, hey, we've got a five-minute speech coming here, or whatever it is, uh, I've never stopped using that. But my favorite resource is, you ready to write this down? Life. Ready. I keep my eyes open. I watch the parent screaming at their child across the street from us. You cut your legs off in that lawnmower. Don't come running to me. I write that down. <laughs> I write that down. I watch uh, it just real things that happen. I watch as I walk into a store today. I purchased a, an item that was close to $1,500. I stood there while the man behind the desk watched me look at this item, slobber over this item. Not once, not once did he say, can I help you? Would you like to see how that works? <laughs> Now, I bought it anyway because they only sell one of them there. But uh, I just made a mental note of, because I went in there. I mean, I'm like a, this was a a Kabuto, I think it's called Kabuto store. Yep. Where they sell these unbelievable hot tools. And and I I think I'd have dropped another $1,000 in there if the guy had just come over and said, look at this. (laughs) You know, but. I bought what I needed and I walked out of the store. So I find my stuff from real life. There, that's as short as I can get. Perfect. All right. Now, how about a a trick or a tip that somebody's taught you that you've utilized? Um, You know, obviously something that falls outside of what we discussed with the score method. Um, Any tricks? Any tricks? Well, um, I love to, before I give a speech, to go into the bathroom turn on the cold water and literally splash cold water on my face. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, I don't know what that does, but somehow it, 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 it kind of lights something inside of me says that now you're ready. You're ready. You're ready to go. And, and that is the best trick that I found just to splash cold water on my face. Sometimes I come out a little bit of that splashes on my shirt. I don't care. They didn't come there to admire my shirt. <laughs> They came there to hear a good speech. So that's one of the tricks that has served me well. I did it before I spoke at the last conference, every single session. Fantastic. All right, Ken, what um, has, really what impact has speaking had on your career? Um, Obviously, I know you teach people how to speak, but I'm really curious as to what the impact has been uh, for you professionally. Well, I would say the impact has been two things. I live a marvelous lifestyle based on the fact that I make a living doing what I absolutely love to do. Um, uh, my, dreams, my dreams have come true. I'm standing in a beautiful home on 12 acres of land, uh, and that means a lot to me. But more than that, uh, every morning when I open up uh, my computer, there are emails, LinkedIn messages, uh, tweets, from people whose lives have been positively impacted by what I say. You subtract that, I'm retired. (laughs) 
As long as that keeps going, man, I'm going to keep going. That's what drives me. Changed lives is what drives me. I just wrote a book recently called Fully Alive. And really, uh, that is about recognizing that and hopping on that thing with all of the power I got. And uh, well, we've met. I don't think I act 65. I don't want to you know, look like I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm having a ball. This is the best part of my life. And, and that's what speaking has done. It has allowed me to impact lives. I don't think there's any greater privilege on the face of the earth. I agree. Well, Ken, we're just going to wrap things up with a couple of remaining questions. I would love to hear from you. What's one piece of advice you wish you would have received when you first started speaking? It's not about you. Mm. That's um, good. I think the greatest fear that comes from speaking is people standing up in front wondering what, uh, what will people think of me? Um, or preparing a speech with the thought in their mind, uh, what will I say? Nobody cares. They, they don't care. What they care about is what their needs are, what, what their hurts are, what, you know, what they need that can improve their lives. And once you stand up, once you get to the point where you stand up and have the confidence to deliver a speech because you know that you're giving and not taking something from the audience, it changes everything. I wish someone had told me, pulled me aside, grabbed me by the lapels, threw me up against the wall and said, listen, you want, you want to be successful? You want to change lives? It's not about you. It's about you giving to the people that you're speaking to. That changes everything. I love it. All right. So, Ken, where can we connect with you online? Where's the best place for us to to reach out to you? I know you're on Facebook. Is there anywhere else? Yeah. Uh, The Facebook thing you have to be careful with because I have a a kind of a – the first Facebook uh, thing I I started was a regular page, you know, and I got tired of farming with people. Yep. So um, I started a fan page, and that's the best place. If you come to my website and go to Facebook from there, you'll go to the right place. Um, also, if you search Ken Davis comedy, you'll go to the right place. And from there, you can access all my books. Um, I'm also on, um, uh, well, I have the website and I'm on Facebook. I, I tweet, I'm Ken Davis live. I would love to hear from any person who heard this today at Ken Davis live. And, um, I, and I actively involved in that. I don't have other people do it for me. I do it, and I, I love making new friends. So that's, that's how you can connect. Perfect. Well, Ken, thanks so much for your time and for sharing uh, the insights into the, the SCORE method as well as some of your personal experiences. I am honored. I am absolutely honored. Thank you so much for asking me. It's been a ball. If you liked what today's guest had to share in our discussion, you may want to grab an audio copy of their latest book for free by going to WTSAudiobook.com. That's WTSAudiobook.com. All right, here we go with the outro. Thanks so much for joining us today on What to Speak. Be sure to visit whatthespeak.com for show notes on every episode and to sign up for our email list to stay updated on resources that will help you kick ass when you speak, present, or pitch. 